The March 2015 issue is devoted to the war on science. I agree in the existence of such a war. It reminds me of when ecclesiastical authorities tried Galileo for heresy nearly 500 years ago for his belief that the earth revolves around the sun. Only today, the sides are switched and the establishment blacklists anyone who doesn't subscribe to their cherished doctrines. Today's politically correct science, which National Geographic defends, includes the safety of vaccines and genetically modified food, climate change, and evolution. There is much legitimate research that exposes the shaky foundations of these concepts, but the scientific gatekeepers either hide alternate views or trivialize them. Let me illustrate, starting with vaccines. Did you know there are at least 49 studies linking them to autism? The health establishment usually attacks one of these studies, a weaker one, but pretty much ignores the rest. Here's how it plays out. When Dr. Sherry Tenpenny was planning to speak in Australia about giving informed consent before an inoculation, she was banned from the country. And now, scientist Jane Goodall, known for her work with chimpanzees, is speaking out against genetically modified organisms. We'll have to pay attention to how she's treated. Meanwhile, the global warming crowd, which now prefers the term climate change, keeps preaching doomsday, often to their own economic benefit. Yet even the New York Times has been forced to admit the rise in the surface temperature of Earth has been markedly slower over the last 15 years than in the 20 years before that, and that lull in warming has occurred even as greenhouse gases have accumulated in the atmosphere at a record pace. It sounds like a reluctant vindication for Weather Channel founder John Coleman, who's been speaking out against global warming since 2007. The crown jewel of political correctness is evolution. Charles Darwin published his On the Origin of Species in 1859. Scientists were more naive then. Now, many of them seem to be willfully ignorant. Darwin's ideas are just as out of date as his hair and clothing in this picture. He failed to take into account irreducible complexity, a nuanced understanding proposed in 1996 by biochemist Michael Behe. It recognizes the interdependence of the parts of a cell. That means a cell cannot survive unless nearly every part already exists something evolution cannot guarantee with its heavy reliance on random chance. Ready for another example of how this plays out? Last year, scientist Mark Armitage made a discovery that challenged the long time scale required by evolution. He found the soft tissue of a dinosaur on a fossil in Montana. This won him a place on the unemployment line. So it turns out, Establishment scientists are the ones waging war on science. If a new discovery doesn't fit their preconceived notions, they shoot the messenger. In its own way, today's scientific establishment is just as inbred in terms of ideas as was the ecclesiastical establishment 500 years ago. A little cross-pollination from different viewpoints would lead to a more robust understanding of how our universe actually works. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.